They plan to keep repeating Putin's price hike until people believe it. President Biden used the phrase Putin's price hike again in a reaction to Friday's Consumer Price Index report revealing continued high inflation, showing once again that the U.S. government believes Americans are idiots. Make no mistake about it, I understand inflation is a real challenge to American families. Today's inflation report confirms what Americans already know. Putin's price hike is hitting Americans hard, Biden said in a statement. My administration is going to continue to do everything it can to lower prices for the American people. Which is, of course, absurd. Prices were already soaring, and inflation was already at a 40-year high before Russia invaded Ukraine on the 24th of February. And there was never anything inscribed upon the fabric of reality which said the U.S. needed to respond to that invasion with an economic war that made everything worse. The U.S. initiated these unprecedented acts of economic warfare in response to an invasion it could easily have prevented with a little diplomacy, and has managed to do so without even hurting the strength of the ruble at all. So there are many people Americans could blame for their shrinking bank accounts, but Putin isn't one of them. And people already know this. Nobody who doesn't work for the U.S. government ever unironically uses the term Putin's price hike except to comment on the Biden administration's repeated use of that term. I've never once seen even the dumbest liberals in my social media notifications use that phrase. Right now, it looks ridiculous to hear even Biden use that term. It sticks out like dog's balls because of how obviously contrived and out of place it is. Like if he'd spontaneously yelled, Cowabunga, dudes, or something. But just you wait. If they keep repeating it often enough and frequently enough, sooner or later you'll start to notice rank-and-file members of the public repeating it themselves. This is because the empire managers understand something which John Q. Public does not, and it's this. If you repeat something often enough, in a confident-sounding tone of voice, a glitch in human cognition known as the illusory truth effect causes them to mistake what you're saying for the truth. The illusory truth effect describes the way people are more likely to believe something is true after hearing it said many times. This is due to the fact that the familiar feeling we experience when hearing something we've heard before feels very similar to our experience of knowing something is true. When we hear a familiar idea, its familiarity provides us with something called cognitive ease, which is the relaxed unlabored state we experience when our minds aren't working hard at something. We also experience cognitive ease when we are presented with a statement that we know is true. We have a tendency to select for cognitive ease, which is why confirmation bias is a thing. Believing ideas which don't cause cognitive strain or dissonance gives us more cognitive ease than doing otherwise. Our evolutionary ancestors adapted to seek out cognitive ease so that they could put their attention into making quick decisions essential for survival, rather than painstakingly mulling over whether everything we believe is as true as we think it is. This was great for not getting eaten by saber-toothed tigers in prehistoric times, but it's not very helpful when navigating the twists and terms of a cognitively complex modern world. It's also not helpful when you're trying to cultivate truthful beliefs while surrounded by screens that are repeating the same bogus talking points over and over again. This would appear to be the strategy behind the continual repetition of the phrase Putin's price hike in particular and the narrative that rising prices are Russia's fault in general. Just saying it and saying it until the illusory truth effect kicks in and overrides people's cognitive faculties. We are being trained. Westerners are paying more because of Western policies chosen by Western policymakers, and we are being trained to look at our shrinking bank accounts and yell, Damn you, Putin! No part of this new Cold War would be possible without copious amounts of such training. Without massive amounts of propaganda, people would never consent to being made poorer in order to facilitate the dopey grand chessboard maneuverings of a few sociopaths on the east coast of the United States. Without massive amounts of propaganda, people would never consent to having the gun of nuclear war held to their heads every day as U.S. unipolarist escalations continually ramp up brinkmanship between the world's two nuclear superpowers. 
without massive amounts of propaganda. People would never consent to agendas which directly hurt them and threaten everyone they know, while providing no material benefit to them whatsoever. But this is true of our entire society in general as well. Our entire civilization is marinating in propaganda produced and promulgated by the powerful in order to manipulate our collective psychology into consenting to a status quo which serves them and not us. Over centuries of dynasties, upheavals, and revolutions, powerful people have learned that the best way to dominate a population is to manipulate them into serving your interests while giving them the illusion of freedom and control. The invention of mass media has facilitated this new form of tyranny, as has the emergence of psychology as a field of study. These two factors have combined together to give rise to the steadily advancing science of modern propaganda. This is why the world is as it is, because the people have been psychologically manipulated at mass scale away from using the power of their numbers to create systems that benefit them instead of a few powerful sociopaths. This is the source of all our major problems. Understanding it and finding ways to overcome it is the solution. The only reason they've been able to manipulate us in this way is because they understand all the many ways our minds can be manipulated better than we do.